for those joining us online, uh, there are technical difficulties, so hopefully we'll be able to keep you going. Um, but apologies if for some reason there is some change uh, and you'll have to log back in. Um, but I hope that you uh, are embraced and feel loved during this uh, service um, of the word. So friends, let us prepare our hearts and minds as we listen to the prelude. Please stand. Friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts so that truly repenting of our sins we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we hear God's word. The first reading is from Joel 2, excuse me, verses 1 through 2 and 12 through 17. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, we'll read Psalm 51 responsively. It's in your bulletin. Um, I'll read the non-bold parts, and then uh, Gretchen will read the bold parts, and please join in on the bold. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, and your great compassion blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and write in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me and would have me know wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me, 
and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Let me teach your ways to offenders, and sinners shall be restored to you. Rescue me from bloodshed, O God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. For you take no delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offering. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a troubled and broken heart, O God, you will not despise. A reading from 2 Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way. Through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, please stand for the gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the other hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. 
Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Friends, this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God the Father, through the crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Who knows? I find this question Joel speaks to his people just so human. Have you found yourself asking this same question this past year? Will I finally take down the Christmas decorations? Who knows? Will I get out of pajamas today? Who knows? Will I write that paper or sermon today? Who knows? Will the Orioles ever win a World Series in my lifetime? (laughs) Who knows? When will we get to stop wearing these masks? Who knows? When can we gather with more people, with our family and with our friends? Who knows? When can we start singing again? Who knows? When will I get my vaccine? Who knows? This oh-so-real human question Joel asked indicates for us how unknown the situation really is for him. And it's the question that will be asked for generations. For some background, the prophet Joel wants the history of the land to be remembered, the land of God's own chosen people. He wants people to remember what is currently happening right then and right now. And guess what it was? A plague of locusts ravaging the land and God's people. I think it's safe to say that we can identify with Joel and the people who feel helpless in an unknown situation when an external thing is coming to destroy and kill a society. Although no sin has specifically been identified, Joel insists that lamenting rituals should be done, hence the fasting, weeping, and mourning. The prophet insists the people should engage in repentance and return to the Lord. Rend your hearts, the prophet pleads. But friends, notice why the people might do these things. It's because of God's character, gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. It's God's grace, mercy, and love which motivates the people and us to give full body repentance. One of my professors wrote in a commentary that the repentance called for by Joel is no surface level repentance, but one that cuts to the core of our bodies, our emotions, and our spirit. Fasting, weeping, mourning. When Jesus talks about these acts of piety, he warns about doing them so flagrantly in public. He says when giving alms, praying, and fasting, to do so in secret. But why? I mean, we are putting ashes on our foreheads. It's very public. But why? And again, Jesus, the very essence of God, knows who God is. God shows up. The Father who sees in secret will reward you. Friends, we are seen by God, whether we want him to see us or not. 
just like the people being plagued by locusts, no sin was identified. And the sins that captivate each and every one of us are different. Yet the Lenten call is the same to each and every one. Self-examination. To confess and repent. But why? Because we ground ourselves in the God of grace. That is why we mark ourselves with an ashy cross. On the one hand, we remind ourselves that we will perish, for we are dust. Our journey in this life has a certain time. Yet the ashy cross is put on our foreheads exactly where the cross of Christ was marked on our foreheads in baptism. We remind ourselves of our humanity, of our sin, and the need to repent and confess because we know that on the other side, the God of grace and mercy is ready to reward us. God, the Father, the loving parent, is holding us tightly and not letting us go the entire time. Our heart, which is filled with the Holy Spirit, is overflowing with the treasure of Jesus because we have been reconciled to him, as Paul says in 2 Corinthians. The cross that will be marked on your forehead in just a few moments is good news. It's a reminder that through the times of full body repentance, when all the nasty stuff boils up to the surface, God stands ready to take it all away and say, you are loved, and you are enough. So indeed, today is a glorious day for the sinner to be in need of a Savior. Will the people be spared by the plague of locusts? Who knows? But there is hope in the text, despite no guarantee from God. Will we be spared from our sin? Will God save us? Will love win? Will God relent, turn, and leave blessing for us and for his people? If you want to know the answer for Joel's people, read the second and third chapters of that book. But if you want to know our answer, let's take a 40-day journey of self-examination, confession, fasting, repentance. And I bet you that at the end of those 40 days, we'll find out. Amen. Friends, hear this invitation to Lent. Today, with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy and communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. And let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. 
At this time, I invite you to take a posture of confession, uh, whether that's standing, kneeling, or sitting. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you, have mercy on us, O God. Our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you, have mercy on us, O God. our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you, have mercy on us, O God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you, Have mercy on us, O God. Our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. And may these ashes that we are about to receive be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We'll just go one by one like we normally do for communion, just coming up here. Um, You can kneel or stand or whatever posture you want. Um, And feel free to just take a moment of reflection time up here. For those at home, If you don't have ashes among you, get coffee grounds, eyeliner, whatever you have, and mark a cross on your forehead. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. 
Repent and believe in the good news that you are loved and that you are enough. Amen. Remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Repent and believe in the good news that you are loved and that you are enough in Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Repent and believe in the good news that you are loved and that you are enough in Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Repent and believe in the good news that you are loved and that you are enough in Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Repent and believe in the good news that you are loved and that you are enough in Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Repent and believe in the good news that you are loved and that you are enough in Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Repent and believe in the good news that you are loved and enough in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Remember that you, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Repent and believe in the good news that you are loved and enough in Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Repent and believe in the good news that you are loved and enough in Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Repent and believe in the good news that you are loved and enough in Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Repent and believe in the good news that you are loved and enough in Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Repent and believe in the good news that you are loved and enough in Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Repent and believe in the good news that you are loved and enough in Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Repent and believe in the good news that you are loved and enough in Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Repent and believe in the good news that you are loved and enough in Jesus Christ. Amen.
Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Repent and believe in the good news that you are loved and enough in Jesus Christ. Amen. I look forward to next year when I can slap a nice, big, messy cross on your foreheads with my <laughs> big thumb. We continue in the bulletin. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Friends, I invite you to stand for the prayers of intercession. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. Let us respond to each petition with, hear our prayer. O oh God, you call your church to be ministers of reconciliation throughout the world. Inspire your church in its proclamation of the gospel and guide its ministries to build up the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. O oh God, you created the earth and all its inhabitants, and you declared that it is good. Protect mountains and valleys, animals and plants, and direct us to be good stewards of all you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. O oh God, you desire peace. Direct governments and leaders to work for the well-being of all people and raise up advocates to speak and serve on behalf of the downtrodden. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O God, you are our hope in the midst of despair, our help in the midst of sorrow, and our consolation in the midst of affliction. Grant comfort to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. and support caregivers who attend to all in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you are love, and you call us to love one another. Accompany with your grace those journeying toward baptism, and call us all to repentance as we prepare to celebrate Christ's death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. O oh God, you are our life and our salvation. We give you thanks for the righteous who have died in faith. Inspire us by their example to proclaim your steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for our journey. Merciful God, accompany our journey through these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism that we may provide for those who are poor. Pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all, that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Confident in the promises of your Son, our Savior. We are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. So now we go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Friends, go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.